next speaker this morning is a man that I'm sure none of you have heard before, Father James Blunt. <laughs> I jest. I have a sense of humor. So, Father James Blunt is an internationally known prince of the, priest of the Society of Our Lady of the Trinity, Georgia Mission, a very gifted spiritual director and confessor. Father Blunt is a powerful instrument of the Holy Spirit, as evidenced by so many stories of miracles, healings, and conversions. He speaks of the living, of living a life and relationship with each of the persons of the Holy Trinity. His teachings depict his deep love for the Eucharist, his intimate relationship, love, and devotion to Jesus and Mary draws many souls to also fall in love with them. His humble boldness and untiring drive to minister to the lost and ill are particularly noteworthy. And I must add to that that uh, I've been watching him on YouTube for the last year, and I was forming the opinion this is one amazing man. And his humility, his, he has a beautiful simplicity and way of saying things that everybody can understand, yet he's a great depth to him. And he's a great sense of humor. So please put your hands together for Father James Blunt. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. And pass the ammunition. Amen. I want to teach you a prayer. You might know it by now, but you need to know it in Ireland. Because as Pope John Paul said twice that mankind is now involved in the greatest battle between good and evil since the flood of Noah. John Paul said that with all of his sanctity and all of his learning. And then he actually said a second time a few months later to a group of young people, mankind is involved in the greatest battle between light and darkness, the word and the anti-word, since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we are in a battle. Amen? Amen. And I think it's fun. I kind of like it. <laughs> because we were meant to be warriors like St. Patrick. We are not wussies. We are not wimps. We are warriors. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. So, beloved, first let's blind the devil. So would you say this prayer after me called the Unity Prayer? I'm an exorcist by training, and I've seen this prayer work in wondrous ways wherever I go. Even with people who are possessed, this prayer can actually set them free. So would you say this after me now? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's on page 14 in their booklet. Oh, it's on page 14 in your booklet, Deacon says. Good job. This is a pretty good group here, isn't it? So, but say it after me. That way we're saying it twice. You see what I mean? That hits the devil, boom, boom, twice. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Now, I have a practice that I say this at least twice, actually three times when I get up in the morning, and I want to recommend this to Ireland. I do the first one for myself as a priest, and I blind every satanic spirit that comes against me. It also paralyzes the evil spirits. So they're blinded and paralyzed. I tell you, it's the truth. Also, the Virgin Mary said to Elizabeth Kindleman, the great mystic, that it confuses the devil. He's blinded, he's paralyzed, and he's confused. That's a trifecta. Amen? That's fantastic. He's the only one you're allowed to punch in the nose. 
you want to punch him out first thing in the morning, but then I want to recommend to you this, to say it a second time for your family with your intention that the beautiful Lord Jesus Christ, the one Savior of the world, there is no other Savior and no other name given to the human race by which man can be saved. Amen? Amen. Say that for me now. Say, Jesus. Jesus. No, you do it louder. Say, Jesus. Jesus. We love you. Jesus. We praise your holy name. Praise you alone are Lord. You are the King of Ireland. You are true God and true man. And we love you. May all of Ireland love you. Amen. Ooh, how does that feel? That's spiritual coffee. Amen. And so I would recommend to you, it takes about a minute. Thank you, brother. It takes about a minute. You say it first for yourself, secondly for your family, especially for the young ones. You see, it blinds and paralyzes the evil spirit, which means that he is prevented from tempting you. And so you pray it for your family, especially for the young, that no evil spirits like, you know, sexual temptation or addiction temptations or suicide temptations. You say that all those demons are blocked from your family members. Amen? Amen? Then I want to recommend, it's up to you, of course. This is not canon law. It's up to you. Maybe a third time for all of Ireland. Can you imagine if everyone in Ireland would say this prayer every day? I want to tell you, all the demons would be gone and your government would change overnight. <laughs> Amen? So let's say it now a second time for all of your family members. They may not be here. Maybe your cousins. This is for all of our family members to be protected today. Are you ready? Would you say this after me? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My adorable Jesus. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? And I shared with the good people last night, remember this, don't be fooled by the beauty of this prayer, which is really a poem. It's, it's poetic. It's just like the Holy Mother of God. Mary is all beautiful. Once when I was a teenager, Mary appeared to my brother and I. You would not believe the eyes of the Virgin Mary. When you look in Mary's eyes, you enter into paradise. We Catholics are the most blessed people in the world. And you are sons and daughters of our mother. Amen? Hallelujah. Mary is so beautiful, but if you would look down at her feet and lift her little robe about two inches, you would see combat boots. <laughs> she wears a beautiful dress, but she also has combat boots underneath. Amen? Amen? Don't you be fooled by mama. Don't you be fooled. And this poem is just like our mother. It's absolutely beautiful, is it not? From a literary perspective, it's a beautiful poem. Yet it's all powerful. And the Lord says, we Catholics need to increase our faith. We have the weapons we need to win, but we're not using them. We have the weapons. This prayer has an imprimatur. In fact, I met with Cardinal Peter Erdo twice this week. He's the Cardinal of Budapest, Hungary, who approved this prayer. 
This prayer is fully approved and it works. Mama says they don't need anything more. They just need to use what my son and I have given them. Amen. So why don't we say it one more time? This is for Dublin and for Ireland. That God would blind and paralyze all the evil spirits over this city and over this country. Are you ready? Are you warriors? Okay. Would you stand with me just for a minute? We're going to take authority over the evil spirits that are floating over Dublin right now, including the spirits of Guinness beer. <laughs> All the evil spirits. Are you ready? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And beloved, feel free to raise your right hand like this. It's like a sign of authority from the baptized. All of us are baptized. So all of us share in the great priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. My adorable Jesus, My adorable Jesus. May, our may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Now take your right hand up in the air and make a fist. And when I say three, we're going to punch Satan in the nose. Are you ready? One, two, three! Boom! Oh, you just knocked him out. Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord. And pass the ammunition. So, I'm going to teach you a second prayer to knock out Satan. Is that okay? But first... Uh, would you mind if you and I read the Bible together? Is this a Protestant group? Oh, I'm sorry. Because I love the Bible. Do you love the Bible? I thought this was a Protestant group, so we'll read the Bible together. Are we Catholics? Then that's our book. We wrote that book. Amen? I don't mind if they use it, but it's our book. Amen? So we got to start using it ourselves. Amen? Hallelujah. So here is a psalm you and I can pray together. And when we pray the psalms, we put the fear of God into Lucifer. And the Lord says to recommend to his Irish people that you read sacred scripture out loud in your house every day. Now, easy. Just take one psalm a day. So I'm not talking about trying to study the Bible with exegesis for 45 minutes what I mean is one psalm a day, but read it out loud. When you read the word of God out loud, the devils scramble. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to make them scramble now. This is a house now. Today, this is the house of God. This is Psalm number eight. Are you ready? Now, would you... Say this after me, line by line, okay? This is extraordinarily beautiful, and the Catholic people need to start reading the treasure of the Bible more. Amen? Just start with a book of Psalms this year, one psalm a day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready, Ireland? Ooh, baby, we're going to get going now, okay? Would you say this after me? How great is your name, O oh Lord our God, through all the earth. Your majesty is praised above the heavens, on the lips of children and of babes. You have found praise to foil your enemy. To silence the foe and the rebel. Amen. Amen. Isn't that powerful? We're going to keep going, but isn't that powerful? There's an old Christian hymn that goes like this. 
The chains that seem to bind you only serve to remind you that they fall helplessly behind you when you praise the Lord. I'm getting the Holy Spirit goosebumps right now. Maybe we can make that the official song of Ireland. The chains that seem to bind you only serve to remind you that they fall helplessly behind you when you praise the Lord. Amen? Praise, beloved, is a powerful weapon, to put it mildly. The Bible actually says in another place that the Lord sits enthroned on the praises of Israel. In other words, when the Catholic Church praises the Lord, we create a supernatural throne in the air, and he himself, Jesus, the majestic king, comes down from heaven and sits on that throne and reigns. The Lord sits enthroned on the praises of Israel. Amen. You were made to praise the Lord. What did John say? If you don't praise him, the very stones will cry out. Amen. That's why Ireland was made to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Try it now. Say, I praise you, Lord. You are beautiful. You are good. You are great. You are almighty. The devil trembles at your name. And we worship you. Alleluia. You're starting to sound like real Catholics. Amen. We are victorious. Does anybody know the middle name of Jesus? His middle name is Victor. Does anybody know the, mi <laughs> the middle name of Mother Mary? Victoria. Does anybody here know your middle name once, when you're baptized? Your name, if you're a man, your middle name is Victor. If you're a woman, your middle name is Victoria. Amen? Because we always win. Amen? Hallelujah. Your middle name is Victor. Your father owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and your middle name is Victoria. Amen? Shall I teach you my Catholic cheer? When I see Pope Francis, I shall ask him to approve it officially, okay? Here's my new Catholic cheer. Are you ready? But you got to put your right fist like this. Would you say this after me? Because you, Ireland, were made to praise the Lord. That's the special charism of Ireland, to praise the Lord with joyful song. Amen? Would you say this after me? This is my official Catholic cheer. Are you ready? We always win. We always win. We always win. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Mary. We always win. Get back, Satan. Come down, Jesus. We love you. Grant victory to Ireland. Amen. You're sounding more Catholic every minute. Hallelujah. Ireland was made to praise the Lord. Amen. I need a little sip of water. I have a great advantage as a Catholic priest. You know what that is? Every day, I drink holy water every day. It's one of the fringe benefits of being a priest. My salary is very limited. I, sh I have no stipend at all. I have a vow of poverty. But I want to tell you, my retirement benefits are out of this world. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it great to be Catholic? There's nothing better in the whole world. There ain't nothing better than to be Catholic. Amen. And to be a priest. It's like a double scoop of ice cream. <laughs> Amen? We are the most blessed people in the world. And your smile should reflect your blessing. 
Beginning today, I declare every grouchy face a mortal sin. <laughs> you must go to confession before you leave. Every grouchy face in Ireland shall be declared a mortal sin. We, <laughs> we are the people of joy, amen? amen? Did you know my grandmother was Irish? My mother's mother was Irish. Hallelujah. So I am, I'm one-fourth Irish. I think it's my right arm and my left leg. They turn green sometimes. So I'm part Irish like you. Do you know what her name was? Katie Carroll. And she was the life of the party. I think I inherited something from her. What do you think? Amen? Aren't we blessed to be Catholic? You see, here's what my mother taught me when I was a little boy. If you don't treasure it, you lose it. If you don't treasure your Catholic faith, you'll lose it. And treasuring the faith means to rejoice over it. Not just accepting it. Give me a break. Not just accepting it. Rejoicing over your Catholicism. Especially the Eucharist and the Virgin Mary. To rejoice in what God has given to you and I. I tell you categorically, we have nothing less than eternal salvation as Catholics. Nothing less than eternal salvation if we cling to the Eucharist and we cling to Our Lady. Amen? Nothing less than salvation. This is why Jesus came. This is why he died. It's why he rose. It's why he gave us the Catholic Church and the sacraments. Amen? So let's pray a little bit more Psalm 8. Are you ready? I'm going to stand in the middle here and see if, if it helps a little bit. Testing, alleluia. Will this be on? Testing, um, alleluia. That's the official Catholic microphone test. Testing, alleluia. Testing, Ave Maria. Boy, you're good looking, aren't you? See, that's another advantage of being Catholic. We become so handsome and so beautiful. I'm sorry, Portugal. I'm sorry, Italy but Ireland is handsome because Ireland will embrace the Lord. Amen? Amen? So Psalm 8, let's try this again. It's so marvelous. And the Lord, did you realize when you say the word of God, you are preaching a supernatural deliverance over your family? In other words, what does the Bible say? The word of God is a two-edged sword. It's not just words. I'm sorry. This is the word of God. It's powerful. When you speak these words in your house, the demons flee from your house. They can't stand the word of God. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pounce on the devil for Dublin. Are you ready? After me, please. How great is your name, name. O oh Lord, oh Lord our God, through all the earth, all the earth. through all of, all of Ireland. Your majesty is praised above the heaven. On the lips of children and of babes, you have found praise to foil your enemy, to silence the foe and the rebel. When I see the heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you arrange, What is man that you should keep him in mind? Mortal man that you care for him. Yet you have made him little less than a god. With glory and honor you have crowned him. You gave him power over the works of your hand. You put all things under his feet. All of them, sheep and cattle. Yes, even the savage beast. Birds of the air. And fish that make their way through the waters. Now say this next part really loud. How great is your name. O Lord, our God, o Lord our God, through all the earth, all the earth 
through all the violin. Now let's give God a praise with our hands. Applause. Now, I want you to do a spiritual exercise with me, if you would. Don't be afraid of the one sitting next to you. I, I want you to turn to your left and to your right and tell them, you are Catholic. You are the luckiest man or woman in the world. Tell that to those to your left and to your right. Hallelujah! Suddenly you look more handsome. Something happened. I think scales fell off. Amen? Amen? Now let's do it again, but do it this way. Would you tell the one to your left and to your right, even if they're big and fat and bald headed, you say the same thing. Okay? <laughs> what I want you to say to them is, you are a son of Jesus and Mary. Hallelujah. Now, one more time. Tell the ones to your left and your right, tell them, God loves you and I love you too. God loves you and I love you too. Mama Mia. Mama Mia. Hallelujah. This isn't fair. We can't be Catholic. We're too happy. We're supposed to be like somber and depressed, aren't we? We're too happy. We can't really be Catholics. But here's what my Savior said. I don't know about your Bible, but here's what's inside of my Bible. It says, I have come that you might have joy and have it to the full. How about your Bible? That's what my Bible says. Hallelujah. Now, beloved, I see as I work all over the place, that the, de the devil is fighting not only the church but the world with what I would call, for instance, the spirit of hopelessness and depression. Even in teenagers, especially in teenagers. Hopelessness and depression. I see it's my enemy's secret tactic. He's trying to rob the church of her joy. And when the church loses her joy, the world is doomed. Because the church is the salt of the earth, you see? And so in order for the devil to attack the world, he tries to destroy the church. And, are you ready? To destroy the church, he targets the priest. That's how he works. Destroying the priesthood so as to destroy and crumble the church so the world falls into his, the palms of his hands. That's his, his plan. So first, I want to pray a Hail Mary with you for all the priests of Ireland, for their protection, that the priests of Ireland become joyful, courageous, strong, and pure saints. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for all the priests of Dublin and of Ireland, especially your own parish priests right now, and try not to judge them. They're being attacked. For instance, if you have 10 demons around you today fighting you, your priest has a hundred or a thousand around him. That's how it works, you see. What does the Bible say? Strike the shepherds and the sheep will scatter. That's right from the Word of God. Strike the shepherds and the sheep will scatter. So first, one Hail Mary, that the holy, most beautiful mother of God, the most beautiful creature God ever made, that she will take all the priests of Ireland into her heart and begin saving them today. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to say the Hail Mary for the priests and, of course, for the bishops and I think for the deacons, too. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, for all the priests especially, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
Now, one more Hail Mary for seminarians, that your seminarians would be bold, holy men, and God would send you more of them. It's hard to become a priest today. For all the seminarians of Ireland, that God would double and triple their numbers and make them into saintly and chaste men. We can't be playing with sexual immorality in any way. Amen? Amen. You know what I mean. No adultery. No fornication, no homosexuality, no pornography, no masturbation, nothing dirty. We are the pure chosen children of Jesus and Mary. And your priests and seminarians must become saints. Amen? Amen. Now for all the seminarians to be pure and holy and filled with wisdom and happy. No grouchy seminarians. Are you ready? Hail Mary! Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. It might be the Holy Spirit, but I'm getting hot. <laughs> We're just getting started. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to continue this, but I want to teach you a new prayer. It's only one sentence. And the Lord says, Ireland, we need to be praying this prayer. Now, it's fascinating. It's called the blood of Jesus devotion, the blood of Jesus. And when the bishops of Nigeria approved this devotion, you see, Our Lady and Our Lord appeared to a young man in Nigeria. His name was Barnabas. They appeared to him and taught him the whole Catholic faith. He was not Catholic. He was not Christian. He did not belong to any religion at all. He had never even heard of the name of Jesus. And Jesus and Mary appeared to Barnabas in the woods, there in Nigeria, in the jungle, and they taught him the Catholic faith. And for one year, they appeared to this young man. You know where he is right now? He's in the seminary. He was a pagan. Now, we say that not as an insult. A pagan means someone has no religion at all, you see? He had no religion. Jesus and Mary chose this young man, and they've chosen every one of you here. We all have a destiny and a mission, not just Barnabas. We all do, and we need every one of you. And We have enough people here today. The Spirit is speaking to me right now. We have enough people here right now to save Ireland. Amen? And so beginning today, beloved, you must start becoming saints. Don't be lukewarm. I'm claiming you for sainthood. Last night we offered our Holy Mass for you. We offered our Mass last night, the Mass of all the saints is what we offered, that everyone who would come to this conference this weekend would become a saint. Amen? Therefore, if you don't want to be a saint, please leave right now. If you don't want to be a saint, open the doors in the back. You didn't know that, did you? You just got zapped by the Holy Spirit. Would you raise your right hand like this with your hand up? My dad was a judge. I'm used to this in the courtroom. Would you say this? I hereby declare by the everlasting mercy of God that I have been chosen to be a saint of Ireland. I hereby declare, in the name of Jesus and Mary, that I will be a saint of Ireland. I hereby declare, through the love of Jesus and Mary, that I will be the greatest saint who ever lived. You can all be tied together. We can all, we'll be tied. Amen? And maybe one day we'll all be canonized together. They'll say, Father Jim and companions. Amen? We're going to be saints together. Amen? And remember, beloved, as one saint actually said, joy is the surest sign of the presence of God. This, this isn't holiness. Can I demonstrate to you? This is not holiness. Stop it. 
Don't put on some pretend pious show. That's not holy at all. Joy is the surest sign of holiness. I'm going to quote you the Bible, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, peace, and joy. I know if you're a true Catholic by your smile. And when you die and you go before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus and you appear before him, he doesn't need to ask you one single question. He and his mother will look at you. And if you're smiling like this, he'll say, son, come on up. Amen? But if you appear before the Lord and you go like this, he'll say, son, I have a nice warm place for you for about 500 years. And when you're fully baked, you'll come back up. Amen? So start practicing now that when you die and you're called home, you die like this. <laughs> Father, what's wrong with her? She's dead. I said, no, she's more alive than ever. <laughs> die with a smile on your face. Amen? Amen? So we make that the new motto of Ireland. We shall die with a smile on our face. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And don't say, oh, no, not me. I'm Irish. Don't you say that. There's a special place in purgatory for Ireland. No, 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 no. You say, I'm Irish, therefore I am the happiest man or woman in the world. Amen? Amen. You'll be so happy that everybody else wants to move here. You'll go from maybe 5 or 10 million to about 500 million overnight. You say, why are you moving to Ireland? Because they're always smiling in Ireland. Not because of Guinness, but because of Jesus. Amen? So the new prayers our Lord and Our Lady taught to Barnabas, one year of instruction, they said, now go to your parish priest. He'd never been in a Catholic church in his life. Not even once. He did not even know what a tabernacle was. So he obeyed the Lord and Our Lady and went to the church, found the priest and said, Father. And Father said, yes, son. The priest didn't know him because he lived in the jungle. I want to be baptized. And the priest said, whoa, that's good but I need to give you your lessons. And the young man, Barnabas, said, Father, I already had my lessons. The priest said, what do you mean? Who taught you? Because this is the one priest of the whole area, you know, one priest for the whole area, and he knew all the teachers called catechists. He knew them. Who taught you? Oh, he said, Jesus and Mary taught me. And Father said, yeah, right. No, Jesus and Mary taught me. He thought maybe the man had lost his mind. So he sat the boy down to give him his instructions and to test him. Barnabas knew the Catholic faith better than the priest did. And Father baptized him right away. You would know it well, too, if Jesus and Mary were your personal tutors. Amen? And our Lord and our Lady taught them special prayers called the Blood of Jesus Devotion. And I don't know if you know this in Ireland, but you know when the bishops approve this with a complete imprimatur for all the prayers, there's about a 100-page booklet that goes with it, the bishops approved it and said, this new devotion is the continuation and a further flowering of the divine mercy devotion. This is the icing on the cake. You got divine mercy, I've got the blood. The blood brings it to a higher level. That's what the bishops actually said. This is the divine mercy devotion brought to a higher level. Now, the sacred heart of Jesus' devotion, all of these come from the sacred heart. Sacred heart, divine mercy, blood of Jesus. And after that, the one we already did, the flame of love comes after that. They build on each other. The sacred heart devotion teaches you and I not to be afraid of God that God is tender and loving. The divine mercy devotion teaches you something even more. It's what Thomas Aquinas said in the Summa, that mercy is the highest attribute of love. So not only does God love you, but divine mercy teaches you and I that he forgives you and I and the whole world. He forgives everyone no matter what they've done. Then he gave the blood of Jesus devotion in Africa on top of that. And the blood of Jesus says this, you know now that God is not fearful, he's beautiful and loving. You know now that he forgives all of your sins, 
But you still have a battle every day with Lucifer, with Satan. And my mercy is such, I'm going to set you free from the devil himself. Amen? Is that mercy? You better believe it's mercy. You know, I'm trained as an exorcist, and I've seen like hundreds of times somebody come into the office filled with devils, all bound up, you know, grumpy, depressed, sad, and then we do the exorcism, and they leave free and happy. Amen? I'm getting my warning. I'm just getting started, Deacon. What's wrong with Ireland? Can't we preach three hours? Hey. I, I, I fully agree with you. If you can do a miracle on the lunches and the chefs, I'd be very delighted. <laughs> Deacon's my boss. So I'm going to teach you the one-line prayer right now. It's only 12 words. You have to memorize this prayer. I think one of our ladies brought some prayer cards today with the flame of love and the blood of Jesus prayer on the back of it. So if she's here, we're going to distribute those maybe later today. We have those prayer cards. But this is easy to learn. Would you say this after me? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now remember, the devil is the lord of sadness. I have seen the devil on numerous occasions, and I do tell the story on, on one of the talks how Satan appeared in my bedroom physically and looked at me with these raging red eyes. The devil was filled with hatred and with anger. And he actually said to me, I'll just quote him, I couldn't believe it, I despise you, like that. And I thought, hmm, that's good. <laughs> if he hates me, I'm doing something right. Amen? Amen. So I love that. that he despised me. The, the saying goes like this. If you're walking down the sidewalk and you meet the devil face on, it means you're going in the right direction. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So Ireland, you're walking down the streets of Ireland, and you're meeting the devil head on. There must be something beautiful about Ireland that Satan hates. There's something chosen about Ireland. Just ask St. Patrick. There's something chosen about this country. And Satan despises you as he despised me. He said to me, I'm going to quote him, I'm going to kill you. And he's saying that now to Ireland. But you know what I said? I just reached under my pillow, and I took this cross, the relic of the true cross, and I put it in his face. And I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he disappeared. Amen. Amen. Now, you try it. Say this. I rebuke you, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You just made the devil tremble. There's enough people here, the Virgin is telling me, to save Ireland. Now, let, hallelujah. It's time to go, so let me teach you the one-line prayer. It's only 12 words. Would you say this after me? This is a weapon against Lucifer. Would you say this now? Most precious blood, Most precious blood of, Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ, save us, save us and, the whole world. and the whole world. One more time for the teenagers. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. One more time for the government of Ireland. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Amen? Amen? So when I come back, I think I have a healing service tonight. Is that right, Deacon? Yes, yes. Okay. Absolutely. So we'll give you a special prayers tonight. I, I brought the robe of Padre Pio with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and so we'll have the robe tonight and the relic of the true cross and maybe a few other relics as well. But I will teach you when I get back about this prayer and I want to share with you at least one of my miracle stories with the blood of Jesus. You won't believe what I'm going to tell you. You won't believe it. This prayer destroys the demons, especially of addiction, 
and depression, especially. One more time now for Ireland to become the most joyful nation in the world. We're going to destroy the demons of depression. Are you ready? In fact, we're going to say it three times in a row for joy to descend on Ireland today. Are you ready? Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. I now proclaim joy over Ireland. Joy is the fullness of mercy. Amen. I now proclaim over you, my brothers and sisters, the joy of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I love Ireland. Amen. Oh, Amen. Well done. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Honest to God. You could listen to him all day. Honestly. Fantastic. So, so inspirational and joyful and life-giving. Thank you so much. <laughs>